Hi folks, welcome to part one of the urinary system. In this section of the lecture, we're going to focus on the gross anatomy or the visible anatomy of the urinary system. One of the reasons I always start with um, these images for the urinary system, part of the reason is that I think that this is like the world's most fantastic wallpaper and I want to redo a bathroom and put that on one wall just because now that I've gotten that out of the way. <laughs> this image shows you really what the urinary system is all about, which is filtering and cleansing blood in order to get rid of metabolic waste. It is not about making pee, although urine is in fact the end product. So four functions for the urinary system. First is excreting metabolic waste. and the most important of those are called nitrogenous waste. Nitrogenous just means nitrogen containing. The primary nitrogenous waste in, in humans is called urea, but we also make some others, ammonium, uric acid, and creatine. We actually produce ammonia as a normal part of our metabolism, but it's quickly converted into urea because it's less toxic. Still, we need to get rid of it. The next is to control the pH of the blood, which is what maintaining acid-base balance means. Remember that the more hydrogen ions you have, the lower the pH is. Right? We talked about the respiratory system as one of the two systems that is involved in controlling blood pH because the more CO2 is in your blood, the greater the concentration of hydrogen ions, and so the more acidic your blood can be. That's why when people become acidotic, they start to breathe really rapidly. The urinary system is the other system involved in controlling blood pH does that because it can selectively excrete or hold on to hydrogen ions. Third function is to maintain our fluid balance within the body. So when we talk about fluid balance, we have to talk about the relationship between water, which remember is polar, and salts, which are the result of ionic bonding. So you have charged particles. One of the things that folks who teach uh, anat and phys always say is that water follows salt, and it's because of the partial charge with water. The amount of salt, salts in your blood or ions in your blood are going to determine how much, in part, how much water you retain in the plasma, and that in turn is going to alter blood pressure. And then finally, last but I suppose not least, although we don't talk about it a lot in this course, the urinary system, the kidneys are involved creating certain hormones and secreting certain hormones. They make EPO, so remember erythropoietin, which is a hormone that is a signal to stem cells in red bone marrow to increase the production of erythrocytes or red blood cells. The kidneys also take the vitamin D that the integument or skin produces and activate it. And then that activated vitamin D, which again is a steroid hormone, is active in the, um, the small intestine and increases the absorption of calcium. Okay, so organs. You got your kidneys. You got your kidneys and their job is filtering blood. We'll talk about the nephron, which are the microscopic units that are responsible for that in a later lecture. So two kidneys sitting right on top of the kidney like a little hat is the adrenal gland that we'll talk a lot more about when we do the endocrine system. Once urine is produced, it is transported out of the kidney and down to the bladder, which is right here, by the ureters. The bladder, remember bladder is the name that we use to describe essentially pouches inside the body that are used to store things. So the urinary bladder 
stores, you guessed it, urine. And then the urethra conducts urine outside of the body. If we look at the at the bladder, there are there are two sphincter muscles at the base of the bladder in both men and women. The inner one is a smooth muscle and the outer one is skeletal muscle. So the, the bladder itself is a muscular organ, not as muscular as, as the uterus, but it still has a lot of smooth muscle. And it's embedded in the lining of the bladder are stretch receptors. Those stretch receptors communicate with the nervous system or tell the nervous system that the bladder is being distended and that in turn leads to a signal to relax the bladder muscles, the bladder sphincters. The kidneys are above, just above the small of your back, just barely inside the rib cage on either side of the vertebral column, the bones of the, the spine. So in this posterior view, right, you've got coxal bones, the vertebra. So from about the 11th thoracic to the third lumbar vertebra, right? Similar location in both males and females. When we look at the kidney on the outside, what we notice is that the kidney is covered by a very tough connective tissue membrane called the renal capsule and the there's also a concave area on either kid on both kidneys called the hilum or hilum and that's where the renal artery comes in the renal vein goes out and the ureter exits um, renal means with respect to the kidney so if we section the kidneys, take a frontal section through the kidneys, you see that there are three really obvious anatomical areas. The renal cortex, which, and remember, cortex is a general term for the outer layer of a structure, and cortex means bark. The renal medulla, I'm getting ahead of myself. Medulla is a general word for middle. And then the renal pelvis in here. The, the tissue of the kidney is made up of a tremendous number of tiny filtering units called nephrons, and those are the, the filtering units that actually produce urine. Each of those microscopic units plugs into a slightly larger tube called a collecting duct, and those all empty into this central area, which is continuous with the ureters. Again, we've got the, the hilum or hilum, the renal pelvis. So the, the hilum is the area where the, essentially the concave area where tubes are entering and exiting the kidney. The renal pelvis gives rise to the ureter. And then we've got the cortex and then the medulla. And the medulla is the entire sort of middle structure that's it's darker in here and within the renal medulla you have what are referred to as the renal pyramids and they're sort of upside down pyramids they those plug into the calyces so the minor calyx is a small collecting area for urine and then those plug into so this would be minor minor, then you've got a major calyx, and all of those drain into the renal pelvis. You also have a lot of fat tissue in here. Fibrous capsule here, they're referring to the renal capsule. And the renal columns are the, the um, areas where the cortex of the kidney sort of dips down in between the pyramids. The kidney is incredibly vascular, which makes sense, right? Its job is to filter blood. So in this angiogram, this essentially this person was injected with an opaque, a radio-opaque substance so that they could look at the blood vessels in the kidney. It almost would remind you of what we see in the nervous system with dendritic fields. This 
extensive branching of blood vessels. Now, you know, if you have already looked at the videos, the kidney dissection videos for lab this week, there's a lot of discussion about the interlobular arteries and veins and the arcuate blood vessels. For this class, what we're really concerned about you knowing are just the renal artery, which is carrying dirty but O2 rich blood in, and the renal vein, which is carrying clean but fairly low O2 blood out of the kidney. One more time for the win. So we've got renal vein, renal artery, there's a renal nerve, which is why you can tell if you have a kidney stone. I haven't ever had one, but my not quite sister-in-law gets them and she said she'd rather have babies. <laughs> it's that painful. So you have calyces, right, that drain into the pelvis, which drains into the ureter, which is going to fill the bladder, which is going to be drained by the urethra. We've got the renal capsule, the renal cortex, the medulla, this middle area. Let's see what else we have on here that we might not have talked about. We talked about the pyramids, the calyces, blood vessels. Ah, papilla. Um, the renal papilla are the places where all of these tiny tubes are draining into a calyx. So the internal anatomy of the kidney, this is a not a preserved kidney, which is why it's this color and also why it's so red. I have no idea why this person doesn't have gloves on, um, unless they're a butcher, but even so. As gross as that is, <laughs> one of the things I want to point out is that you can really tell the difference in color with the uh, cortex here. And then the redder medulla here, the renal um, pyramids. And then you have all of, you can sort of see the calyces. All right, so next video, we're gonna dive into the filtering unit, the functional unit of the kidney, which is called the nephron. And nephron or nef is, is another prefix you wanna associate with the kidneys. So nephritis is inflammation of nephrons, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so video number two, we will jump into the nephron.